You are Nomad. A member of an elite special forces unit. Ew! What the hell am I looking at here? This isn't Crisis. This is that trash they released on the Xbox 360 and PS3 and had the audacity to call it Crisis. No, not that. The actual critically acclaimed Crisis for PC. And all jokes aside, the 360 and PS3 versions are still fun, but definitely lacking several key components that make this game so great. A remaster, as in an actual remaster at 4K 60 FPS for consoles, is long, long overdue. Now, back to business. You are Nomad. Part of an elite special forces unit equipped with state-of-the-art cutting-edge new technology called nanosuits. Your mission, travel to the Lingshan Islands where you will slip past enemy lines and recover a group of American archaeologists currently being held by Korean soldiers. This game really is something special. Try to imagine a game developer that built the game they wanted to make with no hardware limitations. Almost as if there was no target audience. A game that's built to scale throughout the years and continue to push hardware almost 13 years after its initial release. A game that, in my opinion, hasn't aged. In fact, one could argue this game was so innovative and ahead of its time that it's still managing to outclass a lot of the games currently released in today's market. Breathtaking graphics, top-notch, buttery smooth gameplay, almost perfect pacing, and although maybe a bit generic, also has an engaging story with solid voice acting from your main cast of characters. Side characters, eh, not so much. Campaign clocks in at around 10 hours and can be completed sooner if you hustle. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but I personally have almost 60 hours in the game now, but that's because I've beaten it several times. This game is basically one giant playground. You're equipped with the nano suit, which is basically the equivalent of having superpowers. Damn near everything in this world can be interacted with or smashed, thrown, blown up, what have you. Where this game differs from Crisis 2 and 3 is the ability to control each of your powers separately. Whereas Crisis 2 and 3 basically had a button for stealth and a button for armor. You have to activate not only stealth and armor, but also your speed and strength in this one. Crisis 2 and 3 had those last two basically built into the system where you automatically run fast when you sprint and you automatically activate strength by holding down the melee button. Now, this works better in Crisis 1 for a few reasons. Having only the speed ability equipped allows you to not only run way faster than Crisis 2 and 3, but you move way faster in general. Whereas the other two games, there is always that sense of heft. In this one, you're like a ninja on speed. And it's freaking awesome. Having just strength equipped allows you to jump high, throw enemies further. Hell, throw anything further. Punch dudes through walls, and it steadies the aim of your gun. I've beat this game three times now, and I'm only just now finding out that last one. Because each power works separately and cannot work at the same time, this also allows for a much greater sense of strategy. It also provides a much more satisfying gameplay experience. If you have super speed enabled, you run an enemy down and send him flying like a hockey puck. But you're also extremely vulnerable to gunfire. When you have super strength enabled, you can throw a dude a few hundred feet out or even punch down a house. But, again, you're vulnerable to gunfire. Having armor mode on allows you to take much more damage from gunfire, but you move super slow. Once you learn to switch seamlessly in and out of each power, you begin to see how truly brilliant this game is. Almost like transitioning powers in Bioshock. The nano suit is by far my favorite aspect of the game. Now all this would be pointless with lackluster AI. So I have good news and bad news. AI has crazy reactionary time. The second they see you, they're firing at you. And this of course makes sense considering how powerful you are. They can also see you from what seems like two miles away, and they are extremely precise with their shooting. They will also rush and flank you. The bottom line is, even on normal setting, this game will provide you a pretty decent challenge. And even beating it on my third run, I died several, several times. Okay, so what's the bad news? Well, the bad news is sometimes the AI gets stuck in one place. Or hell, they just won't react to your presence when you're standing right next to them. 
Unfortunately, it works much more than it doesn't. In fact, the AI can sometimes be so relentless when you do get the occasional stuck AI. It's kind of a nice little break. There's also instances where you shoot an enemy and it's almost like your shots aren't registering. This happened to me a couple times, but it was just a couple times. I've noticed that the AI not reacting, that happens more on the 360 version. And yes, I'm currently playing through that version too on Xbox One X. Pacing, as I said, is about as good as it gets. And the game does an excellent job at keeping the action going. There's even a tank mission and a flying mission, although not as good as the on-foot sections, it's still a good change of pace. Three quarters of the way, the game shifts gears from hum human enemies to alien enemies, and the AI works pretty much the same. This is where the game falls off a bit, in my opinion, because it trades the massive open world vistas where you do pretty much whatever the hell you want to do. And it switches to like escort type missions where you're it's by no means bad. It's just not as fun as the first three quarters of the game. Overall, this is a game pretty much every gamer, every so-called gamer has to play the way it was meant to be played. Now, that's not going to happen for a lot of you guys unless it gets remastered, and that needs to happen. This game needs to be played, and it needs to be seen all the way through. This is a game that'll it'll make you see the possibilities when a game developer makes a game they want to make with no agendas, other than to be the best at what they do. It's not about incorporating tired gameplay loops or needless grinding to get the next shiny little object. Or building your game around the concept of keeping the player in your world as long as possible so they can squeeze every last possible penny they can out of you. The fact that this game released in 2007 absolutely blows my mind, people. It blows my mind. A true work of art that's not only immersive but empowers the player. More so than most modern games today. Not a tech demo. A master class in game development, ladies and gentlemen. It's such a shame this franchise died out, because despite the controversy, Crisis 2 and 3 are also really good games. Just not as good as this one. If only, if only we could have had a bow in this one. Oh my goodness gracious. A 9 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Get out! Incoming!